So, during the same time that the boys, Yuji and Yuta, were stuck in battle with Sakona, Kuzukabe and Eno stood ready for the inevitable outside of the domain expansion. Informing his partner of the plan, Kuzukabe tells Eno that once Yuta shatters a portion of his domain, Maki will rush in to attack Sakona. Eno questioned if it was a better idea to send more people in, but Kusakabe rejected the idea as any additional fighters will alert Sukuna and spoil Maki's sneak attack. Landing like a ton of bricks beside them, Kusakabe looks over at Maki, preparing herself for the inevitable. Shattering into nothingness, Yuta's domain disappears, revealing that the sorcerer's best and worst case scenarios have indeed come into reality. As a grievously wounded Sukuna glances back at Maki, Rika, bawling her eyes out, boosts off carrying her severely wounded partner towards Wee Wee. In a flash, the Shoda whips out his blankie and teleports the original MC to safety. I'm pretty sure these panels here are either like half drawn by the way, it might be a feature around how like Maki perceives things, I, I don't know, I, to be honest I just think it's the drawings and everything and I'd love to know your thoughts either way down below. After gaining some distance from Maki, Sukuna realises that it wasn't him who broke the domain, instead Yuta destroyed a portion as a signal and distraction for Maki to slide on in. He speculates that having no curse energy allowed her to pass through the barrier with no issue, whereas her curse tool, he's sure they must have placed it in the domain beforehand. Or like Kusakabe was saying at the beginning of the chapter, which I never actually said, Yuta kind of moved his domain to a specific location and I'm guessing that was probably where Maki's sword was, or like where she'd put it. Feeling the gash in his chest slowly heal, Sukuna notes it's much slower than anything else he's received so far. As it turns out, a wound inflicted by the split soul katana from an individual capable of perceiving the soul usually cannot be healed by simply using reverse curse technique. This is for the reason that one would need to be aware of the outline of their own soul. Due to Sukuna having inhabited a body that contained two different souls, he was aware of the soul's outline in a similar way to how Yuji is. However, because he's been stuck in a battle for so long, the after effects of his previous injuries are making it near impossible for him to treat his wounds immediately. Over with Yuji, as he rushes in to fight Sukuna, he suddenly feels something wrong with him and drops to the floor. Coughing up blood, he questions what the hell is happening with him, but immediately comes to understand what it is. Even with having learned RCT, he's still taken four brutal strikes that would have killed him in the past. He knows it, but something inside of him hasn't completely healed. Appearing behind him, Choso comforts his younger brother and begins advising him on how to properly heal himself by imagining he is visualizing the outside of his body with his blood veins. Nearby and now in battle with Sukuna herself, Maki dodges a slash from him and launches herself off the light pole. Appearing right in front of him like a streak of darkness, Maki slashes upwards. However, Sukuna jumps over the blade. Thrusting it forward, Sukuna grabs it and throws it to the side. Built like a brick shithouse though, Maki, don't budge. Instead, Sukuna is thrown to the ground and gets slashed back through the streets of Shinjuku into a bridge. Cutting apart the bridge with dismantle, Sukuna tosses the debris forwards onto Maki to distract her as he starts to whisper some sneaky incantations. Dodging every rock, like girl doesn't get hit by a single one, Maki then hears the curse chant and drops down, dodging the augmented flying slash at the last second. Standing there, Sukuna notes on how Maki can see his technique better than any other sorcerers, just like when he fought with Maharaga during Shibuya. Observing him herself, Maki theorizes that Sukuna is using curse energy to force his injured heart to beat while healing himself. With a fat grin, Maki taunts Sukuna, asking if he plans on fighting her while keeping that heart of his still beating. Grinning, the king just mentions that he doesn't see why not, he's hardly even tried so far. Meanwhile, over in a frost-covered part of Shinjuku, the Forgotten One, Hikari and the Ice Queen Orome continue their fights. Hikari knows the chick hasn't been trying to hide Sukuna from him, but the dude's presence is stupidly easy to read. Initially, Bro believed that after Sukuna regained his original form, they were fugged. Now though, he believes his allies will win against Sukuna. After all, his cursed energy is taking a massive nosedive. Orome herself just finds Akari's optimism absurd, remarking that Sukuna's curse energy wavers only if he's uninterested in his opponents. She ominously warns Akari that he should feel ashamed for not offering a better fight than Gojo, because as of right now, Ryomin Sukuna has yet to reveal his true strength. So back during earlier moments throughout the series, one of these sorcerers, not even sure who it is, probably Yuji, asked who the strongest first grade sorcerer was. Meime assumed it was Kusakabe. Nanami thought it mostly depended on the situation, still, he also believed it had to be Kusakabe. 
Gojo immediately said it was Kusakabe, but brought up how it'd be a different situation if the big three families were brought into the conversation. Kusakabe though, ever the man to try and downplay himself, replied that it had to be someone other than himself or Usami. And who the hell even is Usami at this point? I can't remember. <laughs> Flashing back into Shinjuku, Maki then leaps over another of Sukuna's slashes and attacks him with her blade. Insanely enough, the dodge dismantle slash cuts in half a nearby skyscraper that begins to fall onto the sorceress below. Smashing onto the road, cars and pieces of rubble are thrown up. Seizing the opportunity as a car slides between them, Sukuna launches a slash at Maki, who manages to block it, but is thrown at insane speeds from its force into a nearby building. Reappearing behind Maki as she smashes through the walls of the office, Sukuna grabs and goes to activate a point blank cleave on her chest. Noticing someone behind him though, Sukuna throws up his hand and sends the slashes in Eno's direction instead of Maki's. Whipping his legs forward, he then stomps on the sorcerer, causing Eno to cough up blood and fall backwards out of the building defeated. Instantly realizing that the sorcerer wasn't holding the same weapon as before, Kusakabe from above then swings down, smashing the floor and connecting with a blocking Sukuna. Disappointed because, you know, obviously he could see that Sukuna somehow saw through his plans, Kusakabe is then tossed to the side as Maki, traveling at body altering speeds, blasts Sukuna through the wall behind him. Changing directions immediately, she jumps up and launches him with a sonic blow that smashes him into another of the room's pillars. Slashing all of the remaining pillars in the room, Maki knows that she has to end it here. Even if they do save Yusa, if the fight goes on, it will put them in all kinds of troubles. How do you make Hashimo? Hiromi Higuruma, and Yuta Akotsu. Following the death of Gojo, all those that represented the peak of strength stood before Sukuna, bearing their own fangs. Even still, they amounted to nothing more than a simple starter. The one who has truly roused his hunger was her, Maki Zenin, the one who had abandoned Jujutsu sorcery by means of a heavenly restriction as the only other person to have made Sukuna feel this excited for battle. Kicking out every cut pillar in an attempt to drop the building on him, Sukuna vanishes from sight. All of a sudden, he grabs Maki by the face and activates a point blank cleave, slicing apart the building and brutally cutting the left side of Maki's face. Unlike Yuji, Sukuna can tell that Maki has shaved away everything until nothing but pure emptiness remains. Looking at each other, Sukuna screams that at its very core, sorcery is skin and flesh. Yet, Somehow Maki, with a body of marrow and bone, seems to deny the very existence of what it means to be a sorcerer. Blocking a thundering strike from Maki, he continues, that sorcery or bone. The outcome of this current bout will prove what is truly worth developing. Surprised, Maki sees that Sukuna stopped his reverse curse technique and isn't even healing himself anymore. Grabbing a hold of her blade and powering up his fist though, Sukuna announces that, well, this is a first, she is the only one who has ever forced him to use this. Throwing his fist into Maki's stomach, Sukuna lands a brutal black flash that reverberates throughout our girl's core and sends her shooting off the overpass. Watching from a hole in a nearby building, Kusakabe can't believe what he's seen. He's the only one left. He can't tell where Yuji or, or Choso is, and he knows for goddamn sure Mei isn't going to help now. To be honest, he was just planning on running once it was obvious they had no chance. Now that they've come this far though, he thinks that he has no other choice. Looking down at the cursed freak, he questions if this is really about to happen. Kusakabe vs Sukuna. Which, you know, I'm, I'm super keen for. If you guys are super keen for it as well, let me know down in the comment section below and smash the shit out of this like button. Right now, I'm also working on a cheeky little, you know, I saw your comments in the last video, cheeky little Invincible versus Conquest video in the background, maybe something a little bit different for the channel that I've never done before. The brutality of that fight just blew me. I just, I needed to speak on that for a moment. I want those as JJK for now. If you guys obviously have enjoyed the video, then like I said, do leave a like. And if you are new around here, subscribe as it really helps out with pushing my content to a bunch of new amazing people. But for now, it's been your professional degenerate, Diavolo, and obviously, I'll be back in a little bit with the Kusakabe versus Akuna battle.